All right, so at this point in the five-step series, you've basically created a lead magnet. You've already sent your indoctrination sequence to your secret cult invite. Number three is you've already given them a lot of value up front in terms of the long-term value and pitches and upsells and things that you may have pro as product offerings. Number four, what are you supposed to do now? The main thing you should focus on here really is to really segment on interest and on uh, engagement. So that's number one, interest and engagement. Number two is that you want to segment also based on weeding out for quality. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that as you build your email list from zero to five, ten, 100,000, whatever you want to do. And you're going to learn exactly how to create your powerful email list that you can use as an asset for your business. So check it out in this video. What's up my friend, welcome back to this video. I'm Evan from Motive Emotion. I make a lot of videos about copywriting, marketing, direct response, and content. Mostly focusing on how to be a high paid consultant, copywriter, and direct response person. And I share with you, a, especially with new beginner copywriters or people trying to get into the game to up their game and up their fees and their, their actual results and their samples for future clients as a portfolio. I'm showing them how to land clients on the phone, how to sell, how to prospect, how to convert people into actual loyal clients long term, and also how to make the desired income that you deserve as a good copywriter. So if you like these type of content videos, you want to subscribe because you'll be able to see a lot more in the future. And in this actual series, you know, I've actually put every single thing up in the card for each one of those five videos. And I've also gone a really deep rabbit hole uh, venture with the five steps of actually how to build that step by step for the formula that I have for actually building lists that work really well and are assets to your business. Let's get into the video about basically how to segment your lists and how to make them hyper targeted so you know that you're persuasive to a specific buyer and how to sell them on things that you offer. Let's go. Okay, so essentially you've got your list already. You've given them a lead magnet, you have them opt in, you're giving them a indoctrination sequence, you have a little cult following already, and you are basically starting up with the people that you are um, giving value to on ter in terms of after you're pitching and whatnot, and after you're already starting with your sales. Um, so we've covered that in video number three, which is step three of you know pitching to people and giving them the offers and what you need to do and how to kind of add, add that content would have Ed, edutational value to them, right? Edutational, I mean like edutainment, educational, and entertainment. Those are mixing them to make edutainment. And that value to them in, in the forms of content is basically giving them products and services in a way that's natural and unique to you and to your brand. So step one here, really, I only have two steps for you this video. Step one here is that you need to know how to segment based on engagement and on quality. So when you're segmenting on engagement and quality, what I mean by this is that you are wanting to give the leads that are super gung-ho about your products and services the most beneficial action-packed thing like right now to do, you know? If they're very engaged, then you wanna immediately move them up to the next step of the funnel and you wanna hyper-target them by segmenting them on certain lists because this whole step four is covering the step of segmentation, right? So we are focused on segmentation in terms of making smaller lists that actually um, compile to make a larger list and that's important because you don't want to just be spamming the crap out of everyone that the same offer and the same discounts and the same upsells and same everything because people are not that engaged and not everybody's in the same funnel not everyone also is in the same buying period or stage because some people are just gonna want free information and more content some people are just gonna want to get more information before they buy something but they are buyers some people are trying to buy now like today or yesterday you know and that's the top 3% that you rarely see, but they are out there. So this whole step on segmenting between engaged people and actually weeding out for quality, and what I mean is high quality and low quality, obviously, because um, the engagement that they have is also a big in, uh, contributor to the quality that that lead is to your business, right? So if someone's super engaged, they've got in disposable income, they're ready to spend it, and they're gung-ho for your products and services, then that's a super engaged buyer because they're clicking everything, they're opening everything, they're reading all the stuff that you sent them, you send them an extra video or tutorial or another little like PDF download or some, you know, some free offer or shipping or some type of discount or coupon code, like 
whatever it is, you're sending it their way, they're opening it, they're using it, they're trying to apply it, right? When you've already done step three, which is again up here, which is basically, you know, sending them your offers and things that you're selling them through your content and whatnot, right? So that engaged buyer is someone who you need to speak with all, all day, every day, basically, and bring them to the next level of your funnel each time. And when they open something and they click and they open something and click and again and again and again, you want to keep peppering them offers and just giving them more and more and more. Be like, basically the mindset for this is like, you want to take someone who is super on point with your engagement, right? And they're really trying to get to the finish line as soon as they possibly can with your brands and the products that you're, you're selling. And you want to just be like, okay, right here. Yeah, here and next and here and this and that and this and that. Like you want to give them leadership to go, you know, here and then there and then over here and then check this out. Like if they keep doing it and they keep biting basically like the fish that you're reeling in, right? Then you are like, all right, cool. Here we're going to go go to the next level and the next product and then this product has another upsell and you want to check out this piece of content because it helps you learn how, you know, how to uh, do what we're doing here in this product or whatever, right? So that is really helpful. And you want to like pretty much escalate as soon as you possibly can and keep going and going and going and pretty much give them everything that you can until they're done buying or until you run out of products and services to sell, right? Like that person, that top 3%, that guy and gal, you want to lead them to water, like a lead a horse to water to drink, right? You, you want to give them everything that you've got immediately because you're like, okay, you just bought this like low ticket product. Great. Would you be interested in this upsell? Okay, great. You, you just bought the upsell. Awesome. Would you be interested in our long-term coaching? Okay, great. You just bought a coaching packages. Would you also want to come to our events that's are, that are live and like a way higher ticket and whatever? And they say, yes. Okay, great. You know, like you keep leading them uh, down uh, a, the funnel and more and more because you, um, you have a hot buyer, you have a hot lead, you have someone who is ready to keep like committing and, and engaging and getting value from your brand in the purchase form, in the form of purchasing and, and buying in, uh, both with time, money and energy, but buying into your brand and your products and your services, you want to give that person all that they can take basically, right? Because another key here is that these people who are super engaged, those are the most likely people to keep being engaged in the future, as well as the buyers who just bought from you. Those are the best people to target with your new offers again and again, like as soon as you can, because the people who just bought from you are the most likely to buy right again, you know, right after they sell, they buy something. This is why you see all these long form sales letters and then you see the next page after they just buy or before they complete their purchase, but they've after that they've already put their credit card information in is what is it like the next level is an upsell. You know, the next thing that they do is an upsell. So they buy something great. Thank you for buying that. Here's something that's also like a little bit more you can save on it right now because we're giving you this one time offer and it's called an OTO one time offer, right? This is an upsell and that thing will never come again if you know they unless they go through that funnel again but that's the discount that you're giving them um and then it works really well as the upsell because they, it's even before the thank you page and you may even decline that and then they would have another like down sell where it's like okay maybe you're not willing to pay like 199 right now how about this thing for like 47 dollars? and that thing is a little bit you know that'll help you add on to your original purchase that you already bought right so like i'm kind of going deep down the rabbit hole at the moment but this is the stuff that works really well because you need to understand that with your email list you want to engage the buyers who are engaged so if they're already engaged, you want to give them more and more and more and more because they will keep buying until they're done or until they run out of money or until you run out of products because that is the best time to grab the people there when they're buying because otherwise you have to start the whole process over again. And so you kind of have to like hit them with other more long form content over the several weeks and months and blah, blah, blah. And then that will, you know, get them more engaged and, and heat them up, heat up their buying temperature and stuff. But the buying temperature will never be as hot as when they're making a decision to buy. So you might as well get all you can out of that and start selling other products at the moment that coincide with what they're buying. So that's a little pro tip right there because that's really important for your engagement. So let's talk about quality. So with the higher quality and the lower quality leads, basically you're looking for people who are opening a lot and who are more engaged and who are more excited to buy your products. And they're not just, you know, clicking something and clicking off the next second or buying nothing but clicking everything. You know, they, they're reading everything and whatnot and then they're never buying anything. That's, that's like you have a middle of the road kind of buying temperature. So you want to move those people to a different list. So when we're talking about weeding out for engagement and quality, these are the types of things that you're focused on when you're actually trying to figure out who is the best buyer and who is the best on your list. So you got, again, we, we cover this in a lot of these previous videos, basically for one, two, three, and also the main uh, five step formula of building the email list from scratch. But you want to have a buyer's list, you want to have a lead list, right? So when you have lead lists, they're just leads. They're just the prospects that have converted into your free offer. And those are leads because you can sell them stuff. 
but the buyers are actually people who have bought from you before. So, you know, in terms of quality and engagement and whatnot, the high, higher up uh, on the list of that is actually gonna be your buyers, obviously, because they've already given you money, they've already purchased something from you. The lead lists are gonna be lower by nature because they haven't bought anything, they're still leads, but as soon as they are purchased uh, purchased something in, ter in terms of like actually becoming a buyer, as soon as they moved over, you're gonna move them over to your buyer's list. So you do have those leads on the buyer and then they are com get converted to the buyer's list, obviously. So that is what you wanna focus on when you're, when you're talking about weeding out from engagement and for quality, because those people are gonna be focused on your offers more, right? So let's talk about number two, which is essentially uh, segmenting based on interest and based on which person is going to buy something uh, or likely to buy something and putting people in different segmentation groups. All right, so probably one of the biggest mistakes that I see in email marketing today, especially with copywriting and people who are trying to launch their own offers and whatnot, is that they just put everyone in the giant bucket, right? They don't do what we just talked about with the leads and the buyers list, definitely. That's like a basic segmentation. That's like your 50% your list should be at least you know half, split down the middle between that or whatever it is, 30, 70, 80, 20, whatever. But you should definitely at least do that. Like if you're not doing anything else, at least split up buyers and leads, like please. Um, that's my request to you as a copywriter, like, please do that. Like, but if you're not doing that, then you're kind of behind the eight ball, but okay, let's say you're, you're there already, right? You do that and you're like, yeah, duh, Evan, like give me something valuable. So if you're already there and you need to know what to do on your segmentation list, then keep this in mind because you should be focusing on your offers, like I said before, but the front end um, of the lead magnet should be the smallest little easy piece that's valuable to the larger piece in the back end, right? So we got our funnel, looks like this. We got the wide mouth up front. This is the top of the funnel. This is the most wide and most, um, most widely engaged and interested list, but it's like the people that could be widely possibly somehow related into this thing. And then it's gonna go um, smaller from there, obviously, as you move down your funnel. So when we're talking about this, you wanna take your offers that are at the bottom of the funnel and then move it up to the middle of the funnel and eventually the top of the funnel, but give less and less away for free or for cheap by doing that. In other words, give more and more away as you sell more and more high ticket product, pro products as they go down the funnel, right? So let's say an example is always easy to key, to key this in, right? So you've got, you know, you're a, a consultant, right? For, for finance firms, right? And your main offer is your flagship product, which is your service, which is like the $2,000 a month retainer for financial companies that are look to, looking to boost their revenue, pitch investors, you know, whatever. This is very broad in the finance industry, but let's just say you're doing that, some type of financial service for two grand a month, right? So that's your main thing. You wanna get leads into the top of the funnel eventually to be able to feed all the way down there and filter into your bottom funnel, which is your main offer, which is what you've got. So then your middle of the funnel might be something like an audit or a critique or something for like 997 or something, right? Where you're giving them some type of like in-depth report and research report custom to their business and their financial industry. Maybe you're serving like small to mid-level mid banks and you wanna help them like diversify and figure out which are, uh, markets they, they might possibly go into one day and wanna enter, right? So that would be very helpful to be able to give them like a one-time package that would be in your middle funnel and your bottom funnel would be that longer term, two grand, maybe 5K a month, whatever, depending on their revenue and depending on the value you're delivering for them. Like that would be very helpful. So you give them this audit in the middle, but you still gotta like collect leads and also convert leads and have you're trying to do this through your email list and trying to you know target your decision makers basically by your email list and you can't just like pitch that up front or you could, I don't know, maybe work, you, you, it might work actually, but you could see that, you know, you could test different offers. Obviously this is the whole time of testing, whole, whole uh, basic line of um, thinking when you're, when you're gonna test your offers. But let's say the top of the funnel would be something that's like a really quick like phone call consultation. Maybe it's like 250 bucks an hour and you have like one hour sessions with these clients who are maybe thinking about getting into your longer projects and they're not quite sure they wanna do the audit yet and they don't even know about your service yet, right? But they do know what you do and what you provide and they'd like to kind of do that. So maybe your top of funnel is that $250 sales call where it's like, it's not even a sales call, you sell those but you're actually giving the value on those calls, right? It's a consultation call. So then that top of the funnel, like maybe your lead magnet would be like five things that like every bank needs to understand about how to diversify and how to enter new markets with better customers that are longer term clients or something like that, right? I'm just, again, spitballing off the top. I didn't prepare any of this like before. I was just thinking about this. Like this is just one idea 
you could take it and run with it if you if this is valuable to your niche or you can just start thinking get the wheels turning about how to use this kind of funnel th funnel offering right so your free offer is basically like a, a free like video or like five steps on a pdf or something about how to diversify into these new financial markets and how to find those customers and where they hang out and how to advertise to them right and then someone would opt in like a, a, a small level bank like might have a uh, chief investment officer or um, you know maybe account executive or something like that or whatever they would be you know scouring the web or scouring for solutions or something and your ad would target them about how to figure this out with this diversification of new markets and that's the responsibility is the role and then they um you know they hit your landing page and they opt in and then after they opt in you start peppering them with these offers like we talked about in video one two three and four and this is four but you know one and two and three and also the whole four, uh, long form five step content about how to build your email list Right, so you got this email list and you got this guy or gal opting in who's in the uh, target market that you're targeting, obviously, right? And this person gets your PDF and they report and then they think, wow, this report is very valuable. Like, okay, your next call to action on that report and then of course in your follow-ups after that would be like to hop on the call with me or maybe you know you're starting to pitch that $250 consultation call. Um, so you're also engaging them while they're engaging you, you're testing them out, they're testing you out, and they're also being rated by you, by your lead scoring system about how good a client they could be or how good of a lead that they are on your list. And you know, basing them on engagement and where they are in their buying temperature and how much they're opening, clicking, and how much they respond to for your offers and things that you offer them, right? So that's really important and that's very valuable. So what you would do at this example would be getting that person on the phone by selling that product and which is your main, you know, top of funnel product of the consultation call for 250, which is not that much money. And also for a professional, it's okay to be earning that per hour. Like that's pretty standard for a lot of professionals, especially in finance and tech and um, in investing spaces and whatnot and consultations and, and uh, consultants in general. So you do that and then they, um, you know, you, you pepper them with that offer and some content, again, that's edutainment and focus, right? And um, you are giving them value on the lead magnet and also, of course, you're gonna give them value on that long call, but you're, you're figuring out how to segment them based on what they're interested in. So maybe you have an adjacent offer that's like a, an information product that you've already systemized and maybe it's like 297 and you systemized exactly how to diversify into these new markets and then you know you don't have this person that just opted in into that sales call and that phone call and that uh, the next level of your you know consultation audit for the middle of the funnel or whatever you don't have that person also on the the list to like teach themselves about how to do it by doing it we uh, doing the uh, course and everything because those two things don't really go together i mean they go together in the sense that you know, someone is looking to get the answers, but this person over here that just opted in for your call is probably looking for actual help, like from you, from a professional, right? This person who maybe found your site through some content and they read your blogs and then they check out the, you know, product that you have for sale, which is the information product or a little mini course for 297 or whatever it may be, that person is looking to learn the stuff, right? So that person from that bank, maybe they're, maybe they're even in a different market. And this is why I say that you need to actually segment these lists. You need to be specifically talking to hyper relevant people persuasively to these hyper targeted lists that are very lean in the vertical rather than just having a huge, you know, like major list of 10,000 or 100,000 people and you're just sending them all the same stuff. So I hope that clarifies for you about segmentation and weeding out for quality and interest and engagement because that's what we're talking about right here in this video. And that's what all about this step four is with the segmentation. And there's really those two parts to it that are the most important to keep in mind. So if you thought this was valuable, go ahead and smash the crap out of the like button, obliterate it and just hurt its feelings and make it just so sad by being blue because it's just crying and just you just punched it so hard. So they, this can actually get circulated around the internet a lot more and this brand can grow and then I can take a little bit more time off of my client delivery to deliver you the content in these videos over the long form uh, format that I have and I uh, got a lot more coming for you and the five series is going to be finished up with the next video which we're talking about the long term engagement and the content and whatnot for several weeks and several months of email content how to do that and I'll hop into some of my specific examples about my actual portfolio so I can show you that as well so if you want to know you better be subscribed on that you got to subscribe hit the bell make sure that you're notified first and otherwise you probably won't get the uh, notification when the new videos drop. So once again, this is Evan from Motive in Motion coming at you with the best direct response copywriting wisdom, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.